Hello and welcome to Footy Plus, powered by the Adelaide Crows and Toyota. I'm Amos Gill, and we're going to give you a unique look at all things South Australian sport. From football, to basketball, to horse racing, to cricket and tennis, and even esports. Because now, esports are real sports too. We're going to take you behind the scenes to players, coaches, staff, as they strive for success. Plus, we'll have a look at their lives behind the game. Coming up in this episode, we catch up with Crow turned giant Phil Davis, who reflects on that big decision to pack up and leave Adelaide. When I made the decision to, to, to leave Adelaide, I probably really didn't realise what I was walking myself into. Um, I've learned a lot about myself. It's been great from that point of view. And imagine getting paid to play video games. My mum never believed me. Look who's laughing now. You want to be the best. Everybody here has that drive, that competitive drive. They, they, they want to crush everyone. All right, let's get things moving and speak Josh Jenkins, a man as polarising as a pair of Ray-Ban sunglasses. It's fair to say with JJ, when the Crows cop a loss, the keyboard warriors come out in force, which is pretty stiff considering he's a bloke the club considers essential. It's why they stitched him up with a contract till 2021. Sweet cash money. But JJ has been happy enough to share with us why his Ray-Ban sunglasses are rose tinted in 2018, because he's found the perfect place to keep things real. And he's happy to share it right now. Hey guys, Josh Jenkins here. Grew up in Swan Hill in country Victoria. Been in Adelaide for seven or eight years and I finally found my favourite part of SA, here in Glenelg. I get a really calming and relaxing vibe from uh, my downtime here and that's important because footies can be very stressful so being able to find areas in Glenelg, not just at your home but areas where you live that you can go and relax and, and just get a break is important and Glenelg offers that it's certainly different it was a great vibe a great lifestyle down here it's kind of different to other parts of Adelaide and as soon as we moved down to this this area and we knew that we wanted to stay long term and my favorite thing is is probably why we moved here to be close to the beach particularly in summer there's plenty of great restaurants, plenty of great cafes, there's so many places to go for breakfast and um, whenever you want to relax there's so many great places to go. There's plenty of grass and parks and stuff for the dog and, and got a little one on the way so I can't wait to spend you know, afternoons and evenings down at the beach and certainly that's my favourite part of Adelaide. I'm not too sure what to expect, to, you know, as an as a expecting parent. Um, I'm, I know it's exciting. I'm kind of ready to go right now, in a sense. We haven't got any, any stuff. We haven't got a cot or anything like that. But in terms of just being feeling ready or feeling excited about having that little one come along, Hannah and I are both, well, I am anyway, I'm ready to go. Hannah's probably still working through the process. It's just the evolution of, you know, growing up, getting older and getting married at the end of the year as well. So we'll have a three, three or four month old at the wedding. So that'll be exciting. And um, yeah, it's, it's gonna be a big year. I'd have to agree with you too, JJ. Glenelg, my favorite place in Adelaide as well, cause it's a palindrome. You spell it one way forwards and the same way backwards. How simple is that? Just like JJ, nice and easy. Now we know it takes a lot of hard work and dedication, persistence to become a great professional athlete takes a lot of raw talent as well. But as you're about to find out, a lot of Adelaide United players are relying on superstitious thinking to get the most out of their performance. My game day superstitions are, firstly, I have to have a bowl of Nutri-Grain on game day at any stage, whether it's the morning or before the game. When I'm heading out on game day, there's sort of bars above you and um, I end up hanging on him, I don't know why. Maybe to crack my back, I think that's how it started. My teammates have picked up on it. Um, I end up having to walk through the race first. When I'm walking out with the whole team, I can't touch any lines. I gotta like step, do two or, two or four steps before the first line and then I can walk on the field. And I just don't touch the lines till the game starts. I've been wearing the same shin pad straps for past 10 years. Daniel Margush lines up uh, bottles in his locker a certain way. And then I put my water bottle in exactly the same position, kind of behind the six yard line, 
and behind the byline as well and it has to be upright. The shin pad straps have obviously been since I was 12 years old. I remember scoring a couple goals that game, I was like, I'm wearing these for the rest of my life. Before I step on the pitch, I um, obviously I kiss every tattoo that means something to me, so here, here and on the inside as well. And um, yeah, I try to routinely do that before each game. Then I put my right glove on first and my left glove as well. And then come back in from the warm up, then right shinny, left shinny, right sock tape, left sock tape. One of my teammates, Isaiah. Is. Oh, Isaiah! His superstition is pretty much everything. Uh, you touch his boot and he'd get really angry and he'd have to play in a different pair of boots. If you put a texture mark on his boots, he'd throw them away. As we walk out into the pitch, I won't step on the line. Um, and I'll do two jumps off right leg, off left leg. And my last superstition is before I step on the pitch, it's always two steps on my right foot and then I can walk normally after that. <laughs> if I didn't go through these routines, I don't think anything bad would happen, but I just feel more comfortable. Oh, I play terribly, obviously. <laughs> all valid superstitions there from the boys from Adelaide United. We've all got them. I mean, me as an athlete as well, I will only ever use controller number two on my PlayStation 4 when I'm playing Call of Duty. Gaming's a real sport. I keep trying to tell that to my girlfriend. She'll walk into the house and say, ah, you're wasting your life. What are you doing? You're such a loser. And then I'll turn to her and go, no, no, no. I'm providing for our family in the future because hundreds and millions of people watch eSports all around the globe. And we're gonna take you behind the scenes into what they call a gaming house. On a quiet suburban street in Sydney, inside an unremarkable house, something truly remarkable is unfolding. They're going, they're going, they're going. They're right, all things coming. It's nice. I have nothing, I have nothing. Welcome to the home of Legacy Esports, a major Australian player in the global gaming phenomenon. You want to be the best. Everybody here has that drive, that competitive drive. They, they, they want to crush everyone. It's now almost a year since the Crows, sensing a fresh commercial opportunity, took control of Legacy Esports, becoming the first Australian sports organisation to purchase an esports team. This is uh, Robert. Um, that's going to be a teleport coming. It's sort of a mix of uh, chess and basketball. It's extremely strategic. Essendon followed suit, and the two Oceanic Pro League teams recently clashed in a League of Legends game. They go into decoy, looking for the kidnap, over the wall, teleport coming in, Zion in frontline, but none of the damage is just there. Having the AFC come on board has been pretty huge for us. Um, we've been able to tap into their expertise, you know, high performance is, is a massive part of what they do. You want to work on the trust within, with your teammates, you want to work on the communication and sort of and like resilience and things like that so that when things do go wrong you're all prepared to take on like the challenge that that's there olympic athletes get to spend like their job is to just compete and win and that's our job too it's not too much of a stretch olympic participation has been mentioned for a sport that's watched on streaming platforms by tens of millions of fans around the world people grow up playing games and when they sort of get to uh, to my age, a bit older, and you know their, their interests change a little bit, and they don't have so much time for gaming itself, um, people sort of look to it as a spectator sport. High-performing teams now attract big-name sponsors and go on training camps. They use dietitians, psychologists, and fitness coaches. Not surprising when gaming at this level demands eight to twelve hours per day of training. My grandmother thought like an hour on the day on the computer was plenty, and so that would always just like. That was just awful because I wanted to be playing these games all the time um, and I only got to play like an hour a day when I was younger so it just made me want to play even more. In the small Australian market, top players like these can command $50,000 per year. But for the big names overseas, million dollar contracts are not uncommon. I plan on making a career out of it. There's so many things you can do within the, the scene. These gamers believe their sport has ditched the nerd stereotype. It sort of depends on how you define define geek. I mean, they certainly spend a lot of time playing video games, but, um, you know, it's not the stereotype that uh, has sort of been peddled for the last 20 years. Um, you know, we don't have any fat players. A lot of them spend time looking after their physical health, you know, going for a run or going to the gym. And there's strict discipline in the house as well. Each player must pull his weight with the housework. It's something that I, um, I now have to kind of learn, and we all have to learn, is to live together and you know, learn skills that, that, that aren't just gaming, I guess. 
Toyota is synonymous with the Adelaide Football Club. They've been with the team since day one. And now the car manufacturer has an exclusive new offer for Adelaide Crows members. Toyota are offering Adelaide Crows members a $500 accessory voucher when you purchase a new Toyota vehicle. That's $500 to make your new car stand out from the rest. The voucher will be sent to you in the post. To redeem the offer, you simply head into any Toyota dealer in South Australia with the Crows membership card when you purchase a brand new car. All right, full disclosure, my nose was pretty far out of joint when Phil Davis left the Crows and went to GWS. In fact, it was so far out of joint, people started calling me Owen Wilson. But credit where credit's due, Phil Davis has become one of the best defenders in the competition. He's overcome enormous injury setbacks and he's become a great leader of men. The trouble is, that's exactly what the Adelaide Crows had planned for him. Thankfully though, Phil's caught up with us on the eve of a 2018 Premiership campaign in his mind. Let's talk about that move away from Adelaide. The Adelaide Crows had big plans for Phil Davis when they used pick 10 on him in the 2008 National Draft. But just over three years later, still fresh-faced and clearly nervous, the 20-year-old broke the news no Crows supporter wanted to hear. No, I'm sure they're disappointed, but I hope one day they'll understand my decision. Just 18 games into a blossoming AFL career, Davis was off to expansion team Greater Western Sydney, and the Crows didn't hide their disappointment. Well, obviously our club's bloody disappointed uh, that Phil's made this decision. And you know, when you lose a player who's 20 years old, who we see as a future captain of our club. The Crows' judgment was spot on. Here's Davis who's dominated down oh. there and he does it again. And look at Davis, look what he turned it into. Turned it into gold. As the Giants' co-captain, Davis now walks comfortably alongside the elite. He's overcome serious injury to continue his AFL career and is now regarded as a big personality who inspires, motivates and leads. When I made the decision to, to, to leave Adelaide, I probably really didn't realise what I was walking myself into. Um, I've learned a lot about myself. It's been great from that point of view. It's been a huge um, development in me as a person. Now 27 and having just signed a new deal to stay with the Giants until the end of 2021, Davis leads a team eyeing a premiership. Anyone can win it. We're very confident that we are in a good position, but we know we've got a big improvement because you're not improving this game going backwards and we're going to get to the finals first and then hopefully start winning some finals from there. Davis says he stays in touch with former teammates Taylor Walker, Sam Jacobs, Tom Lynch and David McKay and admits he misses Adelaide. I do miss a lot of good things about Adelaide. I love, you know, it's easy to get around, a lot of good people. I went to school there, got a lot of good friends. So from that aspect, I miss that. But Sydney's got a, a different lifestyle, a bit more relaxed at the moment for, for more stuff, where I am in life. Yes, that is actually what you just saw. A Greek football club's chairman went to pull out his piece to threaten a referee. I'm pretty confident David Kosh or Rob Chapman won't be engaging in such behaviours. But that's just me. I like to see the best in people. For more great content like that, make sure you watch every show where we find the best viral videos in sport. And if you want to keep up to date with any Crows news in the meantime, make sure you go to afc.com.au or follow us on all the socials, Facebook, Instagram and Twitter. Hope you've enjoyed the first show. Keep an eye out for us on 7 Plus in the weeks ahead. Bye for now.